I think it's safe to say that when it comes to climate change, politically speaking, the tide is slowly but surely starting to turn. Because when students in more than 100 countries left school and demanded action on climate change, there was no way mainstream media could ignore that. There was no way that anyone in power could turn a blind eye to that. There's no way that we would not hear their cry. So, you know, of course, since we're starting to see a real global movement manifest that is demanding action on climate change for the first time ever, well, of course, the propagandists at Fox News are choosing to come out and uh, target these children and um, smear them, essentially, misrepresent what they say they're fighting for. And this time, the individual who is doing this is Tucker Carlson, who proceeded to lie about the goal of these activists. See, these children, they don't really care about climate change. Uh, you know, they, they just wanted to uh, play hooky. And on top of that, this isn't actually about the environment. Now, on top of him just smearing them, he is going to throw in some coded dog whistles here that... Um, We'll see if you are able to pick up on uh, throughout the course of the segment, but I'll tell you if you don't catch them. Millions of school children across America, and in fact around the world, skip school today. They weren't playing hooky. They were instead participating in a coordinated left-wing political protest. It was called Climate Strike. So naturally, MSNBC was there to cheer them on. New York City is the home base for these protests. School officials, public school officials, are allowing nearly one million students to cut classes. Some of the signs, by the way, that I've seen so far for this rally are just absolutely fantastic. Look, I am not in favor of encouraging people to skip class, but if there's a cause that isn't important, this is it. So good on you for going out there and telling people what really matters. Congratulations to you and those like you around the world. Congratulations on skipping school. Throughout the day, news anchors assured their viewers that the strike was, in fact, being led by the kids. They were lying, of course. Like all activist movements, the climate strike was organized by cynical adults, adults hoping to exploit children for political purposes, obviously. The other lie you heard today is that the strike was about the environment. It was not about the environment. The main goal of the protesters in this country, for example, was to implement Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez's Green New Deal. You'll remember from just a few months ago that the Green New Deal is not about the environment. In fact, Ocasio-Cortez's chief of staff conceded as much. We're quoting now. We really think of it as a how do you change the entire economy thing, end quote. But that shouldn't surprise you. The environmental movement itself has all but given up on the environment. Don't believe it? Look around. Is our country cleaner than it was? No. It's dirtier and it's more crowded and it gets more of both of those things every year. The left doesn't care. They're cheering it on. Why? Because they want power. And in climate change, they found an emergency big enough to justify grabbing more power. In fact, taking control of everything. Don't believe it? Check out the manifesto of Youth Climate Strike. That's one of the groups leading today's strike. The document calls for, among other things, state-owned banks, single-payer health care, affordable housing, expanded rights for sexual minorities, etc. Now, you may agree with those political goals or you may disagree, but what do they have to do with the environment? Obviously, nothing, but whatever, full speed ahead. Bernie Sanders, among others, is now demanding that the United States begin admitting what he calls climate refugees into our country, maybe in your neighborhood. That would include everyone south of Miami or north of Buenos Aires. All of them now have a right to move here because climate. So he showed MSNBC talking about this as if that was scandalous, but the real story here is how remarkable it is that MSNBC was talking about climate change in the first place. Cable news shows, all of mainstream media, they don't talk about climate change enough. So the fact that these young activists were so loud shows how remarkable this is. I mean, they were effective in getting adults to pay attention. Their protest worked. So the scandal isn't that MSNBC is covering it. That's not the story. You're burying the lead. The story here is people are starting to realize that the future generation is pretty pissed off that we are destroying their future. Now, what he then goes on to say is that this isn't actually something that was uh, organized by children. This is something that was organized by adults. These kids are just pawns in the game of adults. 
Okay, something that I predicted he would say. Well, if that's the case, let's assume that that's true. Does that really matter? If, you know, adults helped the kids organize, are you honestly suggesting that these young people don't care about climate change? They don't care about their future? Is that such an absurd thing to fathom for you? Like, I, I just don't get. See, because you don't care about climate change, because you're rich, and you'll be able to afford whatever lifeboat, uh, you know, is developed for elites... Uh, that doesn't mean that other people don't care about climate change. And I would argue that these young people care very much about climate change because if we don't do something, their futures are ruined. So to say that, to be that dismissive, I mean, it's not really that surprising for someone like Tucker Carlson, who is a propagandist, but it is disgusting. He then says, this isn't even about the environment. The main goal of the protest was to implement Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez's Green New Deal. So first of all, let me remind you, this was a global protest that took place in 150 countries. Most of the children protesting don't even probably know who Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is. But let's assume that maybe they are trying to get the Green New Deal implemented or a version of it in, in their own countries. Doesn't that tell you something about the Green New Deal? Doesn't that tell you that it's popular and that maybe the party that you do propaganda for should adapt? Maybe they should come up with their own solution to climate change. Otherwise, they're going to be irrelevant in a decade or so as younger people vote. I mean, the conclusions that he takes away from this are absolutely comical. Oh, well, they just are promoting AOC's Green New Deal. Okay, but even if that were true, which it's not, that's still not good news for you. He also says the Green New Deal itself is not about the environment. In fact, Ocasio-Cortez's chief of staff conceded as much. We're quoting, now we really think of it as how do you change the entire economy thing? Right, because we have to change our economy. We have to fundamentally change it, transform it in order to save the planet. We currently have a fossil fuel based economy and foreign policy, to be clear. So what we're trying to do is transform our economy so we are investing in clean green renewable technology wind solar hydro so of course if you're doing this huge shift you are transforming the economy like he makes it seem as if that's a bad thing when the people like bernie sanders and aoc the way that they talk about transforming the economy is talking about economic growth making us a world leader in green technology. Do we really want China to be able to be the world leader or do we want to step up as the world leader? I mean, you say that you care about economic growth if you're a conservative, right? So how does that argument not resonate with you? Well, I'll tell you why. It doesn't resonate because he's a hack. Anything that progressives do is bad by definition and anything that Donald Trump and the Republican Party does is good by default. But um, you see, every once in a while, Tucker Carlson will throw progressives a bone and he'll say, you know what? Maybe Bernie and AOC were right about uh, this issue or that issue. So that way we kind of lay off and we think, well, you know, at least he is being honest but it's a ploy. It's a trick. You see, the thing about Tucker Carlson is he's not like the other propagandists at Fox News. He is a much more talented propagandist, more effective at persuading people to listen to what he has to say. He ropes you in by saying, you know what, I agree with AOC on this issue. And then once you're there, he then starts selling you on other issues in hopes that he can convince you. It's a trick. A lot of people, unfortunately, fall for it. Not me, and hopefully not you if you're watching this. Now, on top of that, he says the environmental movement itself has all but given up on the environment. Now, he has a picture of what I assume is uh, homeless people. There are tents. And then he says, don't believe it. Look around. Is our country cleaner than it was? No, it's dirtier and it's more crowded. And it gets more of both of these things every year. The left doesn't care. They're cheering it on. So I don't know if you caught that in the video, but that is... Uh, coded white supremacist words. He's talking about immigration. He's talking about immigration. This was a dog whistle. He was trying to get you to think of immigration without actually saying it. He wants you to blame immigrants for all of our environmental issues rather than the 100 multinational corporations that emit 71% of global greenhouse gas emissions. And you see, the thing about Tucker Carlson and the reason why I say he's more talented than other propagandists at Fox News is because he has mastered propaganda as an art. He can get you to think about something without even saying it, so he has plausible deniability, so he gets less backlash. This is called priming. See, if I say four legs, wolf, bone, bark, 
fur. I just got you to think of a dog without actually saying dog. This is how priming works. You use very specific words to invoke a particular image in someone's mind, so that way they think that the image in their head that you put there manifested organically when in actuality, you were trying to get them to think about that. That's what Tucker Carlson does, and he does this all the time. Like, I'm convinced he has read political science research on the power of media and some of the tactics that they use to, you know, raise the salience of issues and set the agenda. Like, he knows what he's doing when it comes to propaganda, and it scares me. Now, he then goes on to say that the Green New Deal and climate change mitigation policy, this is nothing more than an attempt at a power grab since the quote-unquote manifesto, a word that he chose specifically to invoke a particular image in your head from the youth climate strike calls for, quote, state-owned banks, single-payer healthcare, affordable housing, expanded rights for sexual minorities, etc. So let me tell you why. There is climate change mitigation. We do what we can to cut greenhouse gas emissions and prevent further uh, climate change from happening as much as we can because there's the runaway effect. But also there's climate change adaptation where we acknowledge that climate change is a reality. It's here. It's going to get worse. And we need to arm ourselves with the ability for us to adapt so we can survive as a species. So that means we're realistic about what we're going to need to do. We're going to need to pass Medicare for all because illnesses will need to be treated if we reach catastrophic levels of climate change. There are prehistoric diseases trapped in ice that could make people sick. We need to be able to address that. And Medicare for all does just that. Housing affordability will be incredibly important because climate change will displace millions of people. So we need to make sure that vulnerable communities who will be impacted the most, they don't get put in a worse off situation. We talk about social justice and racial justice because we need to acknowledge that vulnerable and impoverished communities will be hit the hardest. I mean, it's called thinking ahead. If you truly care about saving the human race, adaptation should absolutely be a huge concern for you. But it's easier to just focus on climate change mitigation. Um, so um, liberals don't really push back as much on this talking point from Republicans. And I can see why. It's harder to sell that politically. But I mean, it is essential. If we want to survive, we need healthcare. We need affordable housing. Okay? But um, he then ends this part of the segment by blasting Bernie Sanders, saying that uh, Bernie wants us to admit climate refugees, maybe in your neighborhood. So do you see what he's doing there? He's fear-mongering about immigrants again. You know, even in a video about climate change, he can't help himself. He has to use white supremacist language because Tucker Carlson is, in fact, a white supremacist. Now, I saved the best for last because he is now <laughs> going to denounce propaganda. Um, now, what does he call propaganda? Educating people about climate change. But here's what he had to say about that. Another demand of the youth climate strike group is what they're calling, quote, comprehensive climate change education. They want it for children aged five to 14, five years old, why so young? Well, because, and again, we're quoting here, impressionability is high during that developmental stage, end quote. In other words, brainwashing is easier when they're little. Talk about the pot calling the kettle black. Of all people to denounce propaganda, Tucker Carlson is probably the second to last one, Sean Hannity being the worst offender. But Tucker Carlson, I mean, if you're worried about propaganda, I mean, the way that you feed bullshit to Fox News viewers every single night and you get them to vote against their own interest, to vote for a party that is doing nothing as the world literally burns, I mean, if you're concerned about propaganda, maybe stop doing it yourself. But again, Tucker Carlson is a rich white supremacist who doesn't care. Um, he will likely be able to survive the worst effects of climate change, given he is old enough to see some of the worst consequences of it come to fruition. So, you know, elites aren't going to be affected by climate change. It's going to be younger generations. It's going to be the most vulnerable, the have-nots who will have to deal with this. So it's easy for him in his cozy studio to say shit like this and get paid, uh, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars per year to spread this propaganda. But what he's doing is disgusting, and I don't know how he sleeps at night.